Hey everybody, Dr. Strong here, and thank you so much for tuning into my channel and watching this video. Today, I've got a very special topic. We're gonna to be talking about kidney disease, what causes kidney disease, what the signs and symptoms are, and then also what you can do to prevent it or hopefully to reverse it if it's not progressed too far. But there are 37 million Americans that are living with kidney disease and don't know it. And that's pretty scary to think about. There are a number of physical signs of kidney disease, but sometimes people attribute them to other conditions. Now, if you have these signs and symptoms, it does not mean that you have to do lab testing in order to really officially diagnose kidney disease. Also, those with kidney disease tend to not experience symptoms until the very late stages, when the kidneys are failing or when there are large amounts of protein in the urine. This is one of the reasons why only 10% of people with chronic kidney disease know that they have it. While the only way to be sure if you have kidney disease is to get tested through urinary samples, you can test what is called your GFR or your glomerular filtration rate. I'll give you the definitive levels for what your GFR should be and what stages that it can indicate. In today's video, we're definitely going to be talking about the 10 possible signs and symptoms of kidney disease. Now, if you're at risk for kidney disease due to high blood pressure, diabetes is a big one, a family history of kidney failure, or if you're older than the age of 60, it's important to get tested annually for, for kidney disease. Be sure to mention any symptoms you're experiencing to your healthcare provider. When we talk about the kidneys, we want to think about them as the recycling centers in our body. They recycle and filter almost everything from proteins, hormones, and minerals in our body. It's very crucial that we keep the kidneys healthy for a high quality of life and also to prevent any type of chronic disease from developing. As we age, our filters in our kidneys start to wear out and we have less and less over time. But there are certain factors due to dietary habits that can actually decrease the amount of filters that we have in the kidneys. So it's very crucial that we work on our dietary component in order to make sure that these filters stay as healthy as possible. Just like if you abuse or if the air is very dirty in your house, you have to constantly replace the air filter in your house. Think about that at, in the same way that you do for your kidneys. The most common cause of kidney disease today is diabetes due to what is called glycation from high sugar levels. If you have diabetes, then you could be at higher risk for developing kidney disease or developing a later stage of kidney disease and developing it faster. You may be asking, what is glycation? Glycation is the binding of sugars to proteins, and this causes a plethora of issues. So this can look like diabetic retinopathies, this can look like neuropathies, this can look like diabetes in general. And so in order to prevent that from happening, we have to reduce the amount of sugars in our bodies. Proteins are very essential to our bodies, and when sugar binds to these proteins, it deactivates them and they are not readily available to use for other certain processes like building muscle, breaking down into branch chain amino acids that are the building blocks and essential for pretty much everything in your body. The main way to diagnose kidney disease is protein in your urine. And the first symptom of kidney disease is nocturia or going to use the bathroom at night. So if you're getting up to use the bathroom multiple times a night, then you definitely want to talk to your healthcare provider about what could be going on and making sure that you're testing your labs and your kidney function to make sure that you're not developing any type of kidney disease. The labs that we look at are what's called EGFR, and this is stands for glomerular filtration rate. Now, if you have a GFR of 90 or higher, this is in the normal range and means that your kidneys are functioning optimally. If your GFR is of 60 to 89, it may mean early stage kidney disease. There can also be dehydration and other factors that go along with it. So don't be alarmed if it is a little bit lower. Just make sure that you are talking to your healthcare provider, that you're reducing your sugars, and that you're drinking enough water along with enough electrolytes. 
If you have a GFR between 15 and 59, it may mean kidney disease. So like I said, you definitely want to talk to your healthcare provider and make sure that you're staying on top of it. If you have a GFR below 15, that may mean kidney failure. So really look at monitoring this. This is a routine lab that is commonly done when you do go in for your annual blood work for your primary care provider. So you can look at that and you can monitor. You really want to be aware of this if you have insulin resistance, blood sugar issues, or diabetes. So talk to your healthcare provider and see what that they can do in order to help you along that journey. I recommend that you definitely work on cutting out sugars. There's a free keto plan below in the description. That is a really good place to get started. But here are 10 signs and symptoms of kidney disease that you need to be aware of. The first one is you're more tired and have less energy or have trouble concentrating. Now, I know this happens a lot with many people today, and there are multiple reasons why this is happening. This is only one of the reasons that you need to look into kidney disease and make sure that this is not what's going on. A severe decrease in kidney function can lead to a buildup of toxins and impurities in the blood. Like we talked about earlier, this is our filtration system. This can cause you to feel tired, weak, and make it hard to concentrate. Another complication of kidney disease is anemia, which can cause weakness and fatigue. So be sure that you're ruling this out, especially if you have chronic fatigue syndrome. You're having trouble sleeping is the second one. When the kidneys aren't filtering properly, toxins stain the blood rather than leaving the body through the urine. This can make it difficult to sleep. There's also a link between obesity and chronic kidney disease. So that's really interesting. And sleep apnea is more common in those with chronic kidney disease compared with the general population. Number three, you have dry and itchy skin. Healthy kidneys do many important jobs. They remove waste and extra fluid from your body, help make red blood cells, help keep your bones strong, and work to maintain the right amount of minerals in blood. Dry and itchy skin can be a sign of mineral and bone disease that often accompanies advanced kidney disease. When the kidneys are no longer able to keep the right balance of minerals and nutrients in your blood. So if you have a dry itchy scalp, dry itchy skin, you want to look and make sure one that you're staying hydrated and two that you're cutting out the sugars. Number four is you feel the need to urinate more often. Like we talked about one of the first signs is going to urinate late at night or you're having to get up every night to go use the bathroom. If you feel the need to urinate more often, then that is a sign that maybe you need to look into this and get some lab work done. When the kidneys filters are damaged, it can cause an increase in the urge to urinate. So that can indicate that you're actually getting damage to the filters. Sometimes this can also be a sign of urinary infection or an enlarged prostate in men. Number five is that you will see blood in your urine. Healthy kidneys typically keep the blood cells in the body when filtering waste from the blood to create urine. But when the kidneys filters have been damaged, these cells can start to leak out into the urine. In addition to signaling kidney disease, blood in the urine can be an indicative sign of tumors, kidney stones, or an infection. Number six is that your urine will be foamy. Excessive bubbles in the urine, especially those that require you to flush several times before they go away, indicate protein in the urine. So maybe if you haven't got any lab work, but you're noticing foamy urine, then that can indicate that you have protein. The foam may look like the foam you see when scrambling eggs, as the common protein found in urine, albumin, is the same protein that is found in eggs. Number seven is that you're experiencing persistent puffiness around your eyes. Protein in the urine is especially an early sign that the kidney filters have been damaged, allowing protein to leak into the urine. The puffiness around your eyes can be due to the fact that your kidneys are leaking large amounts of protein in the urine rather than keeping them in the body. Number eight is your ankles and feet are swollen. Decreased kidney function can lead to sodium retention, causing swelling in your feet and ankles. Swelling in the lower extremities can also be a sign of heart disease, liver disease, and chronic leg pain problems. 
Then number nine is you have a poor appetite. This is a very general symptom, but a buildup of toxins resulting from reduced kidney function can be one of the causes. And then lastly, the number 10 is your muscles are cramping. Electrolyte imbalances can result from impaired kidney function. For example, low calcium levels and poorly controlled phosphorus may contribute to muscle cramping. So that was a lot to go through and those are just some signs and symptoms that go along with kidney disease. Like I said, you want to make sure that you're testing your urine and testing your GFR in order to really diagnose at what stage you are or if you even have kidney disease. Those 10 signs and symptoms come along with many various conditions, but the purpose of this video is to educate you about kidney disease, and then let's talk about ways that you can prevent this or even combat it to reverse it. Keto is one of the best ways, especially since we know that the biggest reason for developing kidney disease is diabetes, which is caused by increased blood glucose. The keto diet will help you reduce and help you utilize fat more. So one, it should help you lose weight. And two, it will help you reduce your amount of sugar intake. I've put together a free resource below. If you want to try out the keto diet, there's a 28 day challenge in the description. Just put in your email and it'll send it right over to you. Try it out and let me know what your results are. Intermittent fasting is also a great thing to try out. Try doing a 16 and 8 intermittent fasting window. Typically what you want to try to do is not eat until noon and have your last meal at 8 at night. That way your sleeping window accounts for most of your fasting and then in the morning you can use things like coffee or water or uh, even amino acids in order to get you through your fast. Benfotamine is a really great one as well, which is a type of vitamin B1 that can help you with your sugar cravings. It can also help with any damage to the nerves that comes from the diabetic neuropathies or the glycation in the sugars. There's also berberine, which has been shown to be similar to metformin, which can actually help control your blood sugars and help reduce your A1C. Turmeric is also a great one as well because it will actually reduce the amount of inflammation in your body. So those are just some simple tips and tricks that you can do. I recommend that you work on changing your dietary habits first. Like I said, there's the free guide below. If you have any questions, please just comment below. I'm more than happy to answer any of the questions that you have. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Please like and subscribe to my channel as it helps me accomplish my mission of helping as many people as possible improve their quality of life. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.